Hi, I'm Fran Tarkenden, and I'm going to get smarter today because I've got Mark Murphy here, and he's a great thought leader, author of books, talks about leadership, has a lot of experience, uh, and I'm going to have the pleasure of interviewing him, and you're going to have the pleasure of listening with me to get his thinking. Everything that I learn is from what I read and what I see and what I hear. And now we get a chance to, to have a real thought leader, Mark Murphy here. And Mark, first of all, tell me, I know you've written books, and tell me your, yeah. la your latest book. The latest book is Hiring for Attitude. So Hiring it, for Attitude. Yeah, how do you get great people, people that have the fire, people that have the passion, and that are going to fit what you're trying to do. You know, lots of people get skills. Got to have the attitude, though. I think that's a pretty good thing about fit with skills because I've always thought when I when I play football, our locker room could have 40 all pros. Yeah. But if we didn't have 40 guys that were working together, got along together, treat each other with respect, we're dead. And you're fine. that's kind of where your book is. Though. Exactly. If if you stack an organization with all supposed high performers, yeah, they got the great skills, they got the credentials, all that great stuff. But they're not the people who are going to stay late. They're not the people that are going to connect with your customers. They're prima donnas. They're, you know, narcissists. Your life, A, as a manager, is going to be a nightmare. But B, these people aren't going to help you build your business. All right, let me ask you. You talk about yeah. high performers like that. All right, but what you're saying makes sense to me. You've got to get people that get along with each other. But that could be a cancer could be some guy who's down on the low end of the totem pole, right? Absolutely. Well, and, and so the notion is, I think what you're telling me is that if you've got a cancer in your group, whether they're a high producer or a low producer, they can't play for your team. We call them talented terrors. And organizations too often will, you sort of tolerate them. You're like, I can't, I can't live, they're my best salesperson, yeah. they're my best yeah. printer, best producer, whatever. But when you look at the destruction they wreak amongst everybody else on the team, you know, whether it's team in an office, team on a field, whatever, they're, the drama, everything else, we do this thing well, sometimes as business owners and, you know, frontline employees. Would you rather work short-staffed or work with somebody with a bad attitude? Always, 100% of the time, people on the front line say, I'd rather work short-staffed because I'm going to end up dealing with their drama and the pain and the misery so, anyways. So this is a good lesson for all of us. And, and as I go in, in years, it's more important to me now than ever before. I don't care who the person I hire is. If they cannot get along with the people that are there, we, they can't work at our place. Exactly. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. And, you know, it's interesting. When people fail on the job, when they're you know getting terrible reviews, they end up flaming out, ticking off your customers, all of that, 89% of the time it's because they had the wrong attitude. It's not that they couldn't technically do the job. You know, they could work Microsoft Excel or whatever you need them to do, but they create chaos amongst right. the rest of the team. Let's talk about the attitude thing. You know, we hear a lot about you gotta have a good attitude. Yeah. I'd like to think you've gotta have good habits, maybe, I'm, you know, it, it, it's like, I, I feel this, I, I feel in business or in life, I've got to treat everybody with respect. Mm -hmm. I don't care if they're biggest producer or they're the janitor, right? Absolutely. I don't treat them any differently. No matter, I, I treat them 100% the same at their importance. There's no class system. Right. Treat everybody with respect, you're transparent, tell them the truth, and you're, cor you're corroborating, you're have it, you're giving all the people permission to tell you what they think. Yeah, and that's, you know, attitude, people use it, uh, as you're saying, you know, they use it and they think good attitude means every day everything has to be sunny and rosy and all of that. Yes. And attitude doesn't have to be everything sunny and rosy. Attitude has to be, I'm proactive, I take a step, I, I want to learn, I want to grow. I want to make a difference I for our customers. Teammate. I want to be a good teammate. I want to have a positive impact I on other the, people in I the organization. I want to be the right kind of person. Exactly. And it doesn't mean I have to walk around with a permagrin yeah. on my face 24-7, but it does mean that I have to commit to what it is we're doing. And when you're talking attitude, you're talking about positivity, right? 
mm -hmm. because we've been taught. There was a there was a writer, Norman Vincent Peale. Peale. Yep. <laughs> what power 40 years of positive ago? thinking? Power? Yeah. Forty years ago, he was the pastor of the Presbyterian Church in, uh, on Fifth Avenue in New York, and he was iconic. And he wrote the power of positive thinking. Yep. I read it, and the world read it, and so we got kind of believed that if I am positive, <laughs> things are going to be great. So, Mark, how many times do you ask people, how are things going? And what do they say? I always say, great, fine. Great. Everything's Everything is grand, great. It's Everything perfect. is good, it's perfect. And I've been thinking about that later, and, and I'm going to do some writing on this. I think it's way overstated. Positive attitude, for me, comes from a little edge on my shoulder, everything. Trying to look at everything, make sure I see the problems before they happen, but I see the problems before they happen if I ask questions. Right. So if I'm, I'm in this glow of positive thinking and everything is going to be right if I think positive, it's not going to be right if you think positive. You know, it's funny. We tell people, stop asking your employees, how's it going? Because it's not, it's not actually a question. It's called a conversation ritual. And it's basically Say that this, one more time. I'm, I want you people to hear this. Yes. Yeah, stop asking people, how's it going? Because it's not a question. Yes. It's a, it's a ritual. You say, how's it going? And the normal answer is good, fine, great, whatever. If he isn't, instead, kind of like we were talking, yeah. and you go around and you start asking employees, What's getting in your way? What, what things are, are holding yeah. you back right now? What, what can I do that would make today even a little bit better, that would help you be even more productive? Ask questions like that, and now people stop saying, you know what, oh, hey, friend, everything's great. And instead they start saying, you know what, um, we're having a problem. This piece of software over here isn't working, or the customer calls in and they can't get in on our phone lines. Now you actually start to hear things that you can fix. They're going to make your customer's life better yeah. and your employee's life better.